What's going on everyone? In this video, we'll be going over seven predictions for your SAT exam for October SAT. So in other words, I'm about to give you the secret sauce on what you can almost guaranteed expect on your next SAT exam so you can get it right before even getting that question. Variety of tenses questions is something that's becoming more and more popular on the SAT and always has been popular to be honest. So getting these questions right makes things very, very easy and your score is almost guaranteed to be above 600. But when I mean variety of tenses, I don't just mean past, present, future. I mean something more exquisite, something more exact. For example, let's talk about past perfect. So during his trip to India, he had been learning how to swim. That is a past perfect example because that happened in the past and it's left in the past right it's not continuing to now and the flip side will be present perfect so in present perfect since he began watching rotation sat videos josh's score has been improving so the action was in the past but the effect is still to this day so he's still performing that same action even though he started it in the past that's the idea of past perfect so knowing these two tenses past perfect and present perfect is something that's going to help you a lot especially when you're up against the harder sat grammar or sat tense questions which sat has been increasingly more and more trying to push on the students because they know that hey the past present and future questions are so easy that we need to ask some extra sauce the exponential function formula is a necessity for you guys to understand right you got population and growth population decay when you dissect this formula right you know there's the base value it's usually the starting amount for a population or whatever the problem is talking about then you have your rate right inside the parentheses is your rate it's either one minus a percent if it's decay or one plus a percent if it's growth right and then you got your time variable which is the exponent these problems are very easy what i just said is a little formula you have to know so next time you get a question that's like hey carbon life has been decaying at a rate of 13 percent decay one minus a percent which means what should be inside the parentheses should be 0.87 one minus 0.13 is 0.87 so understanding this formula is enough for you to get probably every single exponential question correct because it's very simple but a lot of students just don't put the time forward to actually learn that formula and understand when to use what the dual history passage you see august was predicted to be science right so now october is going to be predicted to be history it's like a it's like a pattern we've seen it in the march we've seen it in the ones prior to that right it's like a, a flip history you got science sometimes you got history science dual history dual so for this one it's expected to be a history dual passage since in august not just myself but others some, some other st youtubers were like all right august is gonna be a science passage it's gonna be science dual passage for october I expect the history one. So what does this mean for you guys? Well, get ready for your history. All right, on Khan Academy, make sure you're practicing those history lessons for like the, the reading history and try to answer at least nine out of 11 questions correct. Because if you get nine out of 11 questions correct, you're getting max four wrong on the, your actual SAT because the dual history passage. So this will basically put you in a position where your reading comprehension score will be high enough where you can crack that 700. That's the goal. That should be your goal. It's to crack above a 700 in SAT reading. Statistic questions. I've said this every single single SAT and for some reason some students still don't listen guys the statistic questions are gonna literally be slammed in, in you on the face like they're gonna be everywhere especially for the math calculator section statistic questions where it comes to population you know fractions when it comes to standard deviation mean medium mode range box and whisker plots all that stuff is fair game and the SAT college board knows that you know a lot of students they neglect statistics they only focus on the linear questions the quadratics the exponential functions right but they forget about about the fact that statistics and data inferencing is a very big thing on the SAT. Know when a conclusion, a data conclusion is correct. Know that if it says, hey, this for certain means this, that's automatically wrong because nothing is 100% certain when it comes to data conclusions. That trick alone, that tip alone is enough for you to most likely get nine out of 10 data inference questions correct. So remember that. 100% certainty equals 100% wrong. Understanding ratios. Guys, ratios are no different than fractions, okay? Three over two is the same thing as three to the two. That's it, okay? So next time you see a ratio, if it helps, just transform it to a fraction. Or if they give you a fraction, transform it to a ratio. Don't be confused about this ratio, what number goes on which side. Just remember, three over two is the same thing as three colon two. If you remember this exact parallelism, then no matter what problem you get on the SAT, you can parallelize it. And so if they give you like 22 over 10, but okay, 22 over 10 is the same thing as 22 colon 10. So do not be tripped up, guys. Ratios are meant to scare students. I, in fact, I've talked to some SAT uh, professors, the ones who like been coaching for years. They've always said that College Board knows that the ratio scares students, which is why they like putting it on the SATs. Guys, don't be scared by it. It's the same thing as a fraction. Don't let College Board get in your head. 
Okay, axis of symmetry. Now, what does axis of symmetry necessarily mean? So for example, if the vertex is five ones, I want you guys to imagine that on graphing paper, you can also use a graph for yourself. You draw a function, the vertex is five one, right? One of these solutions is four zero. Well, if there's an axis of symmetry, you already know what the other solution is. It's gonna be six zero because it's symmetrical. You got four zero, five one, that's one away. So now the other side will be six zero because again, just one away. It sounds pretty crazy when you say it out loud when you actually draw it out, but yeah, it's very, very simple. And I want you guys to get that philosophy out of your head that these ST questions are hard. No, I promise you, if you study 99% of ST questions are be so easy to you. Like, wow, I can't believe this. They're asking me this. This is way too easy. And that's the psychology you need to get that perfect score because we're here to get you guys perfect score. Like, that's why I'm here. I want you guys to get a perfect score. So be sure to remember these things I predicted and tell me, all right, comment down below whether you think these predictions will be correct or not. Or if you have some predictions of your own, I want to hear your predictions because you guys are the ST test takers. I want to hear exactly exactly which prediction is for what your next SAT will have. Thank you all for watching. Peace.